Today's topic is interesting. I spend a lot of time railing on the AAA games industry. It's true, I won't deny that. But to offset that type of content, I also try to examine interesting indie projects and draw attention to amazing and slightly less mainstream games. One game that might fit that definition very well is Last Oasis. Last Oasis is artistically incredible. Shown at E3 this year, the trailer looks to blend open world survival elements with complex land-based strider ships that gives off a reminiscent vibe, at least to me personally, like a sort of mortal engines landscape. As with any marketing material, we have to take it with a grain of salt, to be sure, but artistically, the game looks to be something truly innovative, which is well worth keeping track of. Now, that's all well and good. A smaller indie project, an intriguing art style, and a combination that elicits a definite sense of curiosity. But there is one significant problem that is starting to come to light. At this point, I would like to very specifically thank 21 Kiloton, another YouTuber whom I consider to be a friend, for chatting with me about this information and making me aware of the topic. His content is masterfully executed with a decisive personality, so I would strongly urge everyone to check out his channel, which I will link down below. The issue that he brought to my attention, and also followed up on himself, is that the main attention-grabbing focal point for Last Oasis, with its artistically created land-roaming ships, appears to be strongly inspired, down to very specific detail, by the work of Theo Jansen. Theo Jansen is an extremely talented artist who has been creating kinetic movement-based sculptures for decades, and his designs are truly breathtaking. His work has been prominently featured by various publications over the years, inspired countless more designs by other artists, and, as true innovation so often does, left a definitive mark on those that view the artwork. It is not uncommon to see games or other creative media feature existing artistic concepts, in fact it's abundantly frequent, but the process of properly securing the rights to do so is extremely important. The games industry is no stranger to lawsuits, even ill-founded ones. If we take Fortnite, for example, we can see that the game has been sued by its competitor PUBG over asset design. It has been sued by actors and dancers for copying their specific movements and creating profitable and popular emotes. It has even been sued at a federal level for allegedly manipulating children into purchasing microtransactions with their parents' debit or credit cards. At a certain point, I think that some responsibility needs to rest with the parents, at least a little bit, but that is a topic for an entirely separate video. The point is, though a lot of the intense scrutiny aimed at Fortnite may come from being at the top of the pyramid right now, securing proper permissions before utilizing copyrighted content with a direct fiscal benefit is very important. Because even when the grounds or basis for a trademark, copyright, or intellectual property dispute are thin, if there is a lot of money involved, it's going to come up and all bases must be covered. To be thorough, I should state that copyright infringement happens every single day. Almost everyone in the world has infringed on copyright at some point or another in minor ways because the modern structure of constantly flowing peer-to-peer -peer information and social media guarantees that people are sharing, posting, linking, or what have you without going through and tracing everything back through the web of the internet to its original source, requesting permission, etc, etc, how could they? Still further, a lot of copyright infringement happens unintentionally, but if we really examine Last Oasis, which isn't even really necessary because even at the very first glance you can see that the entire artistic premise is kinetic, wind-powered sculptures, we can see that this is a fundamental building block of the game, with identical mechanical characteristics to Theo Jansen's work. This is where 21 Kiloton did some digging, and also why he shot me a message in the DMs. It turns out, after contacting Theo Jansen, it was made clear that Mr. Jansen had no idea this game was in development. He had no idea that his artistic concepts were in use, and none of the proper legal channels had been adhered to before developing and pursuing this project that is heavily inspired by, if not outright copying, his painstakingly crafted creations. For privacy reasons, I will not literally show any of the communication that transpired, but I have been able to verify the situation. If we consider a game like Fortnite and a concept such as a dance move, for example, US law states that individual moves cannot be copyrighted. However, routines can. So the question needs to be asked, at what point does an emote or a set of moves transform into a full routine? This level of opacity is relied upon by large corporations as they flirt with the legal boundaries of what they can and cannot use. But functional inventions and artistic work such as the sculptures by Theo Jansen are far more clear cut. 
Since Last Oasis has not adhered to any sort of proper procedure, their use of the intellectual property is at a very real risk of being forcefully revoked. Oftentimes, instances where intellectual property is used are fairly isolated. With the lawsuit between PUBG and Fortnite, it came down to healing consumables, assets, and the user interface. It was a weak lawsuit and it was dropped rather quickly, but even if the claim had been victorious, the core foundation of what Fortnite was could have survived. If Theo Jansen were to push forward with a claim, and from what I have heard through my correspondence with 21 Kiloton, he is less than pleased that his concepts are being marketed without his knowledge. If he were to make a steadfast position against Donkey Crew, the developers behind Last Oasis, it would likely mean the complete demise of the project. The most prominently marketed feature of the entire game are the land ships. The most unique element by far is their artistic design. And in a lot of circumstances, though keep in mind I am no lawyer on this subject, if the argument can be made that the copyrighted material is not critical to the work's identity or success, it is much easier to deflect against the lawsuit. Last Oasis would have a very hard time making that claim. This is where we run into one of the issues with the indie games market. On average, I direct a great deal of praise towards indie projects, but the flip side of lacking an overarching publisher, with the money and resources such as Activision Blizzard, EA, Take-Two, etc., is that steps such as securing all the proper intellectual property or copyright permissions may not go as smoothly. With EA at the helm, as hated as they are, securing the rights to an important piece of intellectual property is a snap of the fingers. I mean, they have the exclusive rights to Star Wars, for Christ's sakes. That's no small thing. But for smaller companies that lack a similar level of influence or resources, securing permission to use large concepts can be difficult or outright impossible, leading to a hard choice. Redo the concept, start over, or just go ahead and do it. Of course, it's not the right decision to risk opening yourself up to a lawsuit over unauthorized use, but here we are. A large number of gaming media outlets have already written about Last Oasis as well. Some of them even directly mention Theo Jansen, but none of them seem to have been made aware of or bothered to dig into the issue of artistic permissions. Since the game is set for a September 3rd release date, which is less than two months away at this point, that means the vast majority of work has been completed. This puts Donkey Crew, the developers, in a very precarious position. The previous game developed by Donkey Crew, Of Kings and Men, was not a commercial success. There are a large number of explanations provided, but even if we were to assume that everything went wrong while Donkey Crew was not in fact responsible for any of those issues, it still establishes a less than inspirational track record. Because of the severity of the current situation, there are a number of possibilities as to how it could progress. A lawsuit based on such a fundamental artistic concept could kill the game outright and prevent it from releasing. Or, at a lower level, they could be sued for a large royalty percentage. Of course, it's also possible that nothing would come of it, should Mr. Jansen or his related representatives choose not to pursue the matter, but the foundation for this indie project is anything but stable. Last Oasis seems to have strong parallels to other open-world sandbox games, a recent and immediate example being Atlas. The market for early access highly ambitious concepts like this is rightly skeptical, so even under ideal circumstances, Last Oasis would have a hill to climb, but tied down by a failure to properly secure their copyright permissions, there is an anchor that they will need to drag up the entire slope behind them. This is not to say that I am rooting for the game to fail, quite the opposite in fact, a combination of the Mortal Engine's nomadic world setting, the artistry of Theo Jansen's work, and the complexity of peer-to-peer -peer interactions through the format of an MMO, with a fully functioning player economy to boot, is something I can get very, very excited about. But getting excited about a game with a looming dark cloud above it, based on their previous record of instability during the development phase, and a clear lack of permission to use the artwork that greatly contributes to the visual appeal of the title in its entire entirety, well, that's just getting excited for all the wrong reasons, and it's very risky. I love supporting indie games and lesser known projects, but Last Oasis is one that should be treated with extreme caution, and especially watched until this situation resolves itself. Despite its immediate, surface level sense of unique identity, it is something that heavily draws from existing artwork without the permission to do so. Again, I would like to thank 21 Kiloton for chatting with me, make sure to check out his content, it's very well executed, and I would also like to link Theo Jansen's YouTube channel in the description because it is some truly spectacular work. If you want to support Upper Echelon, there are links down below for channel memberships, merch, etc. All the standard, typical YouTuber stuff, but that's enough for today. I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.